Hello everybody, my name is Donatos Rubonas. Welcome to Basket News Talks. And today we have Jalgiris newcomer, Janis Strelnex, Lab Labdiens, right? Baldias. Labdien. Labdien. Baldias is thank you. Thank you, yeah. Oh my God, I'm, I'm so bad <laughs> with my Latvian. Oh, good. Janis, there's so much to talk about with you because you played for many great coaches. You've played with many uh, great players in the top uh, clubs. But I want to start with the topic, which is not very, you know, you don't feel like in your... Uh, home playing ground it's instagram and i've noticed that probably it was uh during the first quarantine last year probably it was due to pandemic you started posting something <laughs> so i mean because you had nothing to do what was the reason uh, actually even um uh, before in germany i had pretty uh i was posting uh -huh. not a lot but i was posting but then when i moved to the greece then I changed it, everything. Because, because of fans? Because of the fans, there were too much uh, interaction. Everybody wanted to text you and it was like a little bit overwhelming. So that's why I decided that I will keep it for uh, empty for a while and then slowly, slowly. Oh my God, where Panathinaikos were, fans were attacking you? On no, like, no, no, it's not uh, about even attacking, not Panathinaikos. Usually uh, it's your, your oh, team's okay. bad, yeah, because after the bad games, it's, <laughs> everything is bad, you know? <laughs> and then you just see the requests and the follow up. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a little bit just too much. So easier for me was uh, just to be mm -hmm. off, let's say. I, I saw a lot of content with your daughter, with your wife. I heard that you're a dogs fan uh, yeah. too. Mm, and uh, what, you know, what fascinated me, the post on January 3rd or something like that, Kalis, what, what does it mean Kalis in Latvian? 1994, some very young kid standing in some contest, song contest in Latvia probably. <laughs> What yes. is Kalis? Yeah, Kalis. Kalis. That yeah. was me. Yeah. <laughs> that was me. Because yeah, uh, before basketball, I was singing a little bit. Okay. So, yeah. And dancing as well. But that was, I was five, six, seven uh -huh. years old. And then tell, I, tell me about that kid, about his dreams, uh, <laughs> what he was all about. <laughs> to be honest, I even remember how I was singing. <laughs> it, was, it was interesting. Yeah. But then uh, I have older brother. And he was playing basketball. So when I turned seven, I believe, he asked me if I want to try because they were opening the group for the mm -hmm. smaller kids. And um, I tried and I started to like it from the day one. So my mom said, you cannot do everything, singing, <laughs> dancing and playing basketball. So I had to choose. So at that moment, I chose basketball for a while and stuck. And Salis means chicken? Yeah, the little chicken, yeah. because I think... Um, it was not the name of the song, probably. No, 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 no. It's like uh, the name of the contest. Let's uh, say. Oh, okay. Yeah, we call it this. It's Salis. Salis, like yeah. Chicken contest. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, it's not anymore like this, <laughs> but that was, you know, a long time ago. But I really recommend, to, you know, to open Jan Estrelnik's Instagram profile and to check that video. It's, it's just crazy, yeah, it that is. funny, funny Latvian uh, song and stuff. But what was also fascinating that... 14 years later, that Salis kid is getting the offer from the NBA team. Can, can you tell me more in detail? I read some interviews of you. Uh, I remember that in 2018, probably it was November or December, that was, there was information that San Antonio Spurs approached you. What do you remember? And how, how surprised you were by their uh, interest? You would have to ask this to my agent. He knows more uh, details about it. And for me, it was just... Uh, it was during the season, so I didn't uh, really um, consider it. Consider it to move somewhere else. Yeah. But it was Spurs. It was. <laughs> it was. I agree. It's not but like random. I team. still consider. I know my agent always wanted me to at least to go there and try, but yeah. uh, I feel like the Europe is more. Uh, it, we play more basketball. I like it here than in NBA. I think. So, so I, I belong here than in NBA. So I'm not so athletic to play there, so probably it would be very difficult for me to adjust. Yeah, I remember I had conversations with guys like, for example, Rokas Jokobaitis. He was drafted, actually, but the thing is, when every time I was talking to him, he was also, you know, that big fan of uh, European basketball. So I believe you had European basketball idols when you were growing up, yeah? Who, who were your idols? Oh, Diamantidis, for sure, yeah. and. Uh... Even Yasikevich was a mm -hmm. perfect example. If we look 
not so far from Latvia, let's say, and uh, of course Spanulis, and I get to know him uh, when I oh, moved yeah. to Greece. That was a good experience. Navarro, for example, mm -hmm. so many good players, so many good. And um, yeah, I, oh, even uh, Tony Park, I remember, because my first European Championship was 2011, Lithuania. I believe in Lithuania, ah. yes. And uh, we play against France and uh, I felt like I, have, I had to guard uh, Tony Park. It was unbelievable. You, <laughs> there's no way you could guard him. So, but it was a good experience. Too. How, how many points, Tony? I think thirty. Okay, okay. I think thirty. <laughs> <laughs> At least. Yeah. I was told uh, uh, coming back to the NBA topic. I was told that there were multiple uh, teams interested in you. Was there anything more when Spurs? Uh, to be again? honest, I don't know. You, you, the Spurs was the yeah. one we, me and my agent were talking about, but the other teams, uh, not really. Um, you also mentioned that your game suits the European style better. What is interesting that Andrea Trinchieri, uh, your former uh, uh, coach, uh, told that you actually has you actually have NBA skills, but he, he told that probably you're just too slow for NBA basketball. Uh, uh, let's say. And he liked your skill set uh, a lot. And we all know who is Andrea Trinchieri, what kind of personalities it is, what kind of coach uh, it is. And, uh, but I believe that in 2014, when you joined Bamberg, you didn't know him that much, you know, like we do uh, right now. What do you remember about your first practices, your first games, first experiences with Andrea Trinchieri and, you know, getting to know what kind of a coach he is? Very demanding <laughs> from the first day, yes, very demanding coach. And uh, actually at that point in my career, there was uh, the perfect. Everybody was thinking that uh, after the EuroLeague season I had with Ukrainian team, Budi Verni, uh, I moved to EuroCup team. Everybody said, no, it's not a good decision. But at the end of the day, it was the best decision I made. Okay, we played uh, one year in EuroCup, but uh, we won the German League to qualify for mm -hmm. EuroLeague next year. So it was good, uh, good three years. And uh, I have good time in Bamberg. Any examples of uh, Andrea Trinchieri being demanding? How, how unusual he was comparing to the you, other coaches? You, you see on the, <laughs> see the game. <laughs> on YouTube. So yeah, that's, that's him. This is uh, how he sees the basketball and uh, how he can motivate you. He's trying this way. But he developed, or at least he helped to develop for so many good players uh, like you, like Daniel Tyus, Brad Wanamaker, Nicola Melli. The list is uh, really, really long. Uh, what do you remember the most about the way he was teaching? Uh, what do you think? What was the secret? Uh, how he helped the players to make such a jump in their in their careers? We were, um, let's say, every practice we had uh, drawn crosses in the corners on 45s on the top. Mm -hmm. So we were lear learning a, a lot about the spacing, where we want to attack, where you have to be if the ball is on this side, on the other side. So we were just making to perfection. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it uh, worked out pretty well. How can you compare him to our big time uh, coaches like David Blatt, uh, Dimitris to do this? Uh, what can you say about their main differences and the main uh, qualities? You know, it's difficult to... Um, to explain, but they all understand basketball so good, and they they have their own little things that they like to change, and the way they play is just a little adjustment. But it's very hard hard to explain. You know, uh -huh. you have to be with them and to yeah. spend time with them to understand it. So. it probably is tough to understand them from the tactical standpoint. But yeah. were there any differences from their philosophy or the way how they approached players? Well, no, more or less is, uh, I, ca I cannot say the same, but uh, I experienced all of this uh, kind of stuff and um, they're all good coaches. They really understand basketball. They, uh, they all are looking for the weaknesses of the other teams. Mm -hmm. So scouting is very important, of course. And uh, yeah. Be before uh, coming to the next uh, teacher uh, you had in your career, uh, there was some interesting uh, summer market situation in 2019. Uh, some really trustworthy reporters uh, reported that you were finalizing a deal with Panathinaikos in 2019. 
but it seemed like there was a last minute call from CSK Moscow. Well, what do you remember about that summer? What was happening? Where, how close you were to signing with Panathinaikos? I was close. Yeah, I agree uh, and uh, I can say that. But uh, after, uh, and then actually Cheska offer came and, uh, and I had to call to Panathinaikos that uh, for me probably will be better decision to move to Russia than from Olympiakos to Panathinaikos. Uh -huh. Yeah. So they were very understandable, so they didn't say um, anything uh -huh. bad. They understood that the, why I chose, let's say, Cheska over uh, them at the end. Uh, yeah. Do you remember anything about, you know, that kind of last minute call when they jumped on in, in, into the negotiations? It wasn't really like last, last uh -huh. minute call. Uh -huh. It was always, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it was uh, my and my family's decision mm -hmm. that uh, it was time to try to go to play uh, Jessica Moscow. Yeah, because otherwise probably you would have, be, you know, you would have need to delete your Instagram profile. Uh, just... Yeah, <laughs> if there was only no <laughs> pictures, then I would delete. But, but no, probably, it's, <laughs> I don't think it's that uh, crazy. I think for the Greek players is more, uh, uh, more difficult to live uh, this double life, let's say. Yes. But foreigners just will be different, I believe. It was crazy for Spanoulis uh, back then when he changed uh, Panathinaikos to Olympiakos and uh, Spanoulis probably was the next, let's say, teacher, mentor uh, to you uh, throughout your career. And because you played, you know, you were backcourt players, you were playing sometimes with him together in the court, sometimes it was like separate time. Uh, but um, I, I was thinking how demanding, how demanding he was for other backcourt players, for example, how demanding he was for you, because we know Spanulis, he likes perfection, he wants to be perfect by himself, probably he expects some perfection from his teammates. So what do you remember about that case? All I see was how mentally strong he is. Uh, he can play the terrible, let's say, first three quarters, and then when the time comes in the last quarter, you, you always know, you have to just give him the ball because he knows how to close games. And of course, he was demanding from the other players and uh, everybody respected him. Um, but still, I kind of, it wasn't too bad in, in terms of uh, that he was attacking, let's say, be there, do that, do yeah. that. But um, he was always trying to show that the way to win the games, you know, even uh, even the last years when he got older, maybe he wasn't that fast enough, but he was always, uh, his work ethic was uh, top level. So everybody could learn from that. Did you find a connection with him uh, easily? What, what kind of Yeah, it was no was... problem. A very good uh, mm -hmm. family guy and uh, always, if you want to talk about basketball, you can talk with him. <laughs> so, but yeah, he was, he was a very good uh, captain of the team. As I mentioned, you've played with many uh, great players, but there are two names I wanted to ask. Uh, uh, you uh, you played in Spartak uh, like ten years ago, and yeah. your team teammate was Patrick Beverly. It was before before you know you know him becoming famous in the NBA as kind of you know pitbull and, and something. And I c can you bring us back to these practices of Spartak? Probably you played against each other, right? Yeah. What kind of practices it was with Patrick I Beverly? I think in the first practice I got four turnovers in the first five minutes. <laughs> okay. Because I tried to cross over the ball in front of him and it didn't work. <laughs> but then, uh, because I didn't know him before, you know, uh -huh. I was young. He was, he's also, he was back also very then, young. he was very yeah. young, yes. And his hands were so quick. Yeah, he, he knew how to, when he wanted, he knew how to play defense. And we won so many games in, uh, last minutes only because he stole the ball from the point guards at the half court and just went for the easy layup. Yeah, so I believe he pushed you to the edge. You yeah, know? he was, uh, we sometimes even stayed after the practice to play one-on-one -on -one, uh, just with one or two dribbles and uh, it was good. It was a good experience. I liked it. He was my, my roommate as well. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, watching him being so, you know, uh, electrified, uh, what kind of uh, Patrick Beveler person is off the court, for example? He, different? I, he was young also back okay. then. He probably yeah. didn't have yeah, he didn't have any kids, I believe, back mm -hmm. then. I don't remember quite, I don't want to uh -huh. be wrong, but uh so but now I don't know because we don't have uh, the same uh, mm -hmm. contact anymore. So 
I, rem- and, uh, I remember when I was doing the research about you a few years ago, you were probably the best player according to, you know, assist and turnover ratio. So I, he- hearing you talking about Patrick, I believe that Beverly helped you, you know, <laughs> yeah. to develop the skill and how to maintain the ball. Maybe. Well, the other thing is probably I don't risk so many with the crazy fancy passes, for example, I try to uh, play the right way to that's probably the case at the end. There were very interesting name was Mike James. Uh, once again, did you have to play a lot against him in the practices? What did, did you take? No, from he that was experience? playing more as a point guard. So, uh, but still, uh, unguardable. <laughs> when he wants to play, he cannot do anything because he's so huge talent that um, unbelievable sometimes what he does uh, we see what he does in the games but what he does in practice sometimes it's just so smooth and so easy for him to do it so very talented guy i i can go through this list of players you know for <laughs> for hours but uh, let's kind of you know play the game what kind of you know what would be your all five uh, all, all standing team five. you've played oh. uh, your teammates i would say who, who did so many good players. Yes. So many good players. I could make like two, two teams. Two, at two least. teams, <laughs> yes. But I remember uh, I would for sure put uh, Darius Lavrinovic oh, uh, yes. in my top five because that was my year in Budivenik. It was so easy to play with him. He always knew when to pop, when to roll. Mm-hmm. So it was, I think, five, six assists per game. I was only <laughs> with him. So that was, that was a good. So I can put him. And it, actually, I can put top five also from Bamberg team. Okay, yeah, of course. Yeah, the, yeah. the team chemistry we had uh, back then, it was amazing. It was amazing, yes. Uh, one maker, how uh, he started and what player he became after, amazing. And Darius Miller, mm-hmm. probably our uh, X Factor in the German League uh, playoffs and finals because we used him more as a four and he he had uh, three position skills with mm-hmm. the outside game, so he was punishing all the formants on the other teams. So I mean, the same Spanulis, I cannot uh, leave him out of the... Mm-hmm. So I can call, <laughs> I can say 15, a Cheska team, everybody. It they, could be the they, whole tournament, yes, actually. <laughs> because the Cheska also, they are all champions, really champions. You can choose... Uh, Will Clyburn is all a perfect uh, player for the team and... Yeah. That's so, a tough task. That's a tough task. Yeah. I remember when I was doing the research, I was told by some people that, for example, in uh, youth age, uh, U16, U18 generation, you weren't mentioned among, uh, let's say, top five prospects uh, among, you know, U16 players or U18. What do you think who boosted your career the most, who helped you to become the player like you are right now? The beginning, for sure, uh, coach Agris Galvanovskis uh, in Ventspils. Uh-huh. Because my first national team actually was under 18. Okay. And yeah. Uh, yeah. And after that, when we won a bronze medal, then uh, Agris was, I believe, assistant coach of the big team. So mm-hmm. he was the one who took me from the youth team just to come to practice with the, the bigger uh, team to see how it goes. And it was difficult. I thought I will never play basketball <laughs> because the, everybody was bigger, stronger, uh-huh. faster. And I thought that 18, oh, it's, it's tough uh, adjustment to play against 18 year olds. Uh-huh. And then you play against like, let's say real yeah. men. So he was the first coach who really gave me that boost uh, that I really can uh, play. And you were small at that age, let's say in basketball terms. Yes. Uh, I believe from I grew from 17 to 18 years old, like mm-hmm. 20 centimeters. Okay. So that was a big 20. jump. Yes. Yeah. It was like from 165 to 185 and then to 190. But before that, I was so small that I nobody really... Uh-huh. Um, Didn't take thought, you seriously, yeah, probably. I was too small. But the skill was always there. Yeah. How can you explain it? We're just, you know, practicing with but your still, brother? I wasn't the fastest anyway, so I was kind of short, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to say slow or something <laughs> back then because young you can run and uh, uh-huh. run, but still uh, everybody thought that all other guys are better than me. And uh, mm. this is... And here we are. <laughs> and here we are, yes. 
But mm, to continue with Latvian basketball, I think that you played for that youth team, which was the first to bring medals to Latvia, right? If I'm correct. And in 2017, it felt like you were close, you know, to bring medals again uh, to your uh, country. And I remember I was in Eurobasket. I was watching that quarterfinal game, uh, Slovenia, Latvia. And for me, it was like a, probably that game was worth of Eurobasket uh, final, uh, you know. And now, you know, that FIBA window stuff uh, happened. I just want to hear, you know, your your feelings uh, about having such a great generation of, of you, Bertans brothers, uh, Porzingis, Smiths, Tima. There were many uh, great players, but you guys cannot show your potential in big time tournaments. But for example, you see Slovenia, which if I'm correct, they got the wild card for the Olympic qualifying tournament. And of course, they made all the way because they were worth it. So what can you say about your feelings, you know, watching that kind of situation? It hurts. This, uh, to talk about it, it hurts. And uh, that was always also our best tournament, 2017. Mm -hmm. We were, uh, we had high goals, but like we said, we lost to the team who won at the end. So it was, uh, everybody was saying that was like a final. That was a, like a final, but if, for us, it was uh, not a final. And um, it was tough. It could go either way. That mm -hmm. game was so close at the end that, uh, but they hit the last shots at the end and uh, we didn't. That was the, because that game was no defense. There was, yeah. who will score more? Who will, who will have the more talent to score more? And, um, but I, I believe for the fans, it was a crazy game. And but yeah. now if you talk about windows, it's, uh, for us, it's very difficult because, uh, the players who play, let's say Euroleague, uh, cannot even, um, participate. Yeah. Uh, it's just tough and, um, NBA players too. And NBA players too. And, and it's difficult. But now the others have to step up, but for them is also, this is, uh, something huge, the first most, there's so many first experiences in our national team from the young mm. guys. And uh, it was difficult and they had to win the games to qualify for Eurobasket and it's not easy. Everybody knows how to play basketball now in Europe. And uh, especially when everybody expect you to win, it's, it puts, puts the pressure on your shoulders even more. Uh, and unfortunately it didn't happen for us. We lost the games and we didn't qualify for Eurobasket. I don't know what was the last time we didn't play. 2017, probably, the last Eurobasket. Yeah, I mean before. Ah. When it was the last time we didn't participate at all, so... But having all these teammates around and feeling the potential of your team, you, you mentioned you lost the champions of the Eurobasket. And when you watched, you know, FIBA World Cup in China, Olympic Games, did you have that feeling that, oh my God, with that kind of potential, we could have fight for medals, uh, for example. Was there that feeling in your mind? I think in everybody's uh, mind is this feeling that we mm. could easily uh, be in their position, but it just happens that um, it didn't happen for us. Yeah, it was always something, uh, some obstacles that we couldn't pass. Do you believe that there will be the time that you guys will, you know, uh, come together to one place. Okay, you had a uh, pre-qualification pre yeah, 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 tournament and you know, most of the better guys, let's say, uh, came to the camp. Do you feel that that time will come for Latvia, you know, to have all their best players in the main tournaments? To be honest, I don't know. I hope, but mm -hmm. uh, I hope also the younger generation will uh, get better and better and we will have more players in Europe. And even in NBA, if you have a chance, mm. uh, if you find some talent. Uh, but we just need more players outside of Latvia to, to experience uh, European basketball mm. more and more. Before coming to the last part of the interview, uh, I wanted to bring you back to the first EuroLeague season. It was with uh, Budivelny Kiev. And I remember the funny story uh, uh, that when head coach of that team was Einar Zbogatskis, and the GM was Gediminas Novikauskas, Lithuanian mm -hmm. uh, guy. And I, I heard this funny story that when they signed you, the president, president of that team told that who that Latvian uh, is. But after one year, you know, he was like, like that guy who was, oh, I, I signed that guy, you know. What do you remember about? <laughs> I didn't that, even you know. You didn't know that. that. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, that's why I was laughing. I didn't know. Be- because the president told that if if you will fail, Einars will be gone as well as Gediminas Novikauskas. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Can you imagine what kind of stake that was? <laughs> yeah. It's good they didn't tell me. <laughs> that would be more pressure. <laughs> you didn't But, feel any pressure back then? No, no. Yeah. I was young, so it was. When you are younger, it's so easy to deal with this stuff. But still, if they would told me, then oh, probably I would be, they would be a little bit different. So actually, that was pretty good year uh, for us. We almost made it to okay, the Euro League. We mm-hmm. didn't win anything, but um, after there was the Euro Cup, we moved yeah. to Euro Cup, and uh, we were so close to reach the semifinals that we play against Red Star, I believe, quarterfinals, and we lost in overtime in the mm-hmm. second game in a packed uh, this. Uh, gym, uh-huh. the big one. Okay. And uh, yeah, but after we won the Euro- Ukrainian league, so everybody was happy. At it was a nice team, as yeah. you mentioned. Darish was playing good. I believe that Darish, like in this Euro league, in this kind of era of basketball with fives, you know, stretching the floor and stuff mm-hmm. like that, Darish could be even could have been an even better player. Maybe he was already a great player. Yeah, yeah of course, amazing. And talking about uh, uh, Jalgiris. Uh, when you joined Jalgiris, one of the main and probably the most boring topics for you was, oh, health, if Yanis Strelnik is, is healthy. Yeah. We, can, we can, you know, make a lot of fun of it, but probably there are more players in your situation who were, you know, dealing with some injuries and health uh, uh, issues. And I just wanted to hear, you know, uh, your voice, is that something which, you know, let's say hurts you in a way, you know, that you have the skill, Uh, you're still young, you know, to play basketball at the highest level, but you sometimes there are things that you cannot control, uh, like uh, injuries, and sometimes, you know, body can disappoint you. So, uh, how do you keep your head fresh, or it's some, something like you, it doesn't concern you, but you just, you know, just go according to the flow and stuff um, like that? It's not easy, especially when uh, the people around start to ask you, uh, or you are, let's say, injury prone, and mm. you start to think too much about injuries. Because before that, the injuries for me was just part of the job. It happens. Mm. That's it. But then uh, lately, when it gets a little bit more often, then everybody was uh, started started to look, uh, you know, from other side, or maybe. It's, And then it's problem also for you. If you start to think about that this is a problem, then it's a real pl- problem. Mm-hmm. Because before that, I didn't really care. But now it's like something else. Please, nothing, please. Safe practice, safe game. Uh-huh. You know, it's it bothers a little bit. But I try to stay mentally strong to mm-hmm. don't think about the things that much. And um, we have a good team uh, here with mm-hmm. the medical staff and uh, the trainers. So they help me a lot right now. We are working on the things that to prevent from the injuries and uh, to be uh, to be better and let's say healthy. Because my my problem is not the like huge injuries. Mm-hmm. We always are small, which takes mm-hmm. two, three weeks, but it's It takes out of your it's, Yeah, and it's even worse probably than when you have a bigger injury and you stay longer. Every two, three weeks you come back, two weeks you play, and then you get back the same injury. So, so this year we are trying to do our best uh, mm. to make my body stronger, to survive. <laughs> so, yeah. What makes you, you know, what helps you to stay mentally uh, strong? Because that, you know, mental topic is really you know, very popular uh, in, in these mm-hmm. days, in, in the current situation, in the current era of basketball, but it's very important uh, topic. So did you try to find some help for yourself or you just have some things which, you know, helps you to, as, as I mentioned, to keep your head fresh? The family, for sure family. When uh, you are with family, you you don't think too much about basketball and uh, mm-hmm. this kind of stuff. They help you think about different stuff because there is also other life not only about basketball so that's uh, the key thing If you think too much it's, you can go crazy so i'm trying to relax and uh, yeah and walk with the dog fresh air helps a lot <laughs> i've heard that you kind of not maybe started the, some club of dog you know no this dogs. is i want I, i would like to win after the basketball probably uh-huh. but uh yeah because i love dogs i grew up with them uh, around so 
I thought that you will say that you would like to be the head coach, you know, after you will retire. No, no, no. Because of all these lessons, of all these experiences and stuff, being a smart point guard also. That's the thing, because I'm so calm person mm -hmm. and I can be a coach. Uh -huh. I don't want to get nervous or uh -huh. <laughs> something. This, this is the thing. But I can uh, share my knowledge if someone needs. As a consultant. Either as a yeah. consultant, yeah, I will not say no. But uh, as a coach now, I don't see myself as a coach. Ah, unfortunately. To finish it up about uh, Jargiris, uh, what approach you're coming to this Jargiris experience, what head coach Martin Schiller asked from you, because for example, the last season, backcourt players were really important to him. Both Grigonis, Volkov were great players and they were playing really good and they were, they were very important for Schiller, you know, uh, to try to reach all these uh, victories. What he, what the head coach wants uh, from you in this Probably team? Probably the same, because uh, so far we are not doing uh, that good job, but, but still, we just practice together two, three weeks. It's very early. I, yeah, it's very early, but uh, nobody likes to lose anyways, mm -hmm. even the preseason games. But uh, we still have a lot of work to do. And uh, yeah, from the guard position, he wants, uh, let's say, to score, create, and be the main uh, main players on the court. With uh, Still, I believe if we want to build something, we have to build through everybody. You know, we, we are not so let's say, individually strong team mm -hmm. that, uh, let's say, I can play one-on-one -on -one or something, right? So we need, I need everybody on the court to help me play uh -huh. better. So I need uh, all other uh, four players at the time who is on the court to, to help me play my uh, best game. I remember uh, we had a media day and you mentioned that you want something more than just to play in the EuroLeague. You believe that, you know, you can do something more, more than just, you know, to participate. What makes you feel that this team might be really good when the playoff time, for example, will come? Lithuanians generally are uh, very mentally tough uh, players and uh, they know they always have competed in a high level, always play for the big games. And I play against Jalgiris with Olympiakos in the quarterfinals. So that year was uh, probably their best year uh, so far. And uh, they know how to play basketball when uh, you have to play basketball. Probably it's easier to adjust in the locker room, in the team, when you have veterans like Kalnetis, Jankunas, Milakna, Solanovas around, right? Yes, easy, it's no problem. They are uh, helping me a lot, so it's not... I don't feel like, uh, let's say even a foreigner, I don't feel like a foreigner. So, yeah. Oh yes, and uh, I know that I remember when I tweeted about you joining Jargris, there were so many Latvian, uh, so many Latvian fans who were really happy. Uh, about this signing because you know you just got closer uh, to your uh, home country so the thing is, is that i want you know to wish uh, that fans will be able to travel latvian fans will be able to come uh, to konas to, to go to get that euroleague experience and to watch you playing successful and as well as uh, winning games for Jargeris konas thanks a lot Janis thank Trenis. you thank you that was it. Uh, I invite you to follow basketnews.com and you can follow us also on YouTube channel Basket News and all on all main uh, audio platforms.